In this video, I'll tell you why you shouldn't buy this Pottery Barn Linear Chandelier and how to make it work if you already have. If you're considering buying this Pottery Barn Linear Chandelier, I'd recommend against it. There are a number of issues with the fit and finish that I can point out. Um, so there's places where the finish is actually missing how it came to the fact from the factory. These bars here um, aren't actually perpendicular and 90 degrees. They've, they're angled, different angles, both this way and this way. Um, the glass bulbs, um, some of them came, they were misformed up here and wouldn't actually install. This, this um, globe is manufactured poorly. Uh, you can see it's very thick over here it's got a very thin ridge over here you can see this side's taller it catches on this side when you're putting it in and then this side won't go up all the way to see and the whole thing hangs crooked i pulled out this globe and you can see it's already got chips in it and has some of the same problem with a thin and a thick part so i'm not even going to bother putting that one in another thing i want to point out is there are some seams that are pretty visible on these there's two seams 180 degrees apart on all these globes. This is actually two different units I had to put together to get enough to work. Um, the number one reason is if you have a normal standard height ceiling, this fixture, the minimum height, you're going to be able to install it out without modifying it. It's probably about here. Um, so while the description on the website says that it comes with basically 12, 24, 36, or 48 inch options for this bar here, that's not actually how it works with the hardware that's in the box. I got two different units sent to me. They both had the same issue. Uh, they both had the same fit and finish issues. So unless you really like the chandelier, you're okay with it not being um, perfectly perpendicular, and you've got high ceilings, don't buy it. Um, if you are really committed to the chandelier and you want to use it on a standard height ceiling, there's, uh, I can show you how I modified it to get the right length here uh, that's later in this video um, so check it out if that's what you want to do uh, a couple other things that are hard to tell on the website but good to know these are 20 inches apart center to center uh, the power comes in through one side and then feeds everything else so if you want this centered over your table or island or whatever you're going to need the power coming in off center uh, like i have here on this side, while we have the ceiling open up in the remodel, I reinforced and put a board in across, then we drywalled over. Um, so this side is actually mounted in, screwed into a wood that's behind the drywall. Um, so you'll need to be able to mount in two locations, bring the power in through one side, and you need that off-centered by about 10 inches from the true center. So if you're committed to this fixture, um, like I was, because of how I laid out the power coming in, and really needed something. I couldn't find another fixture that mounted the same way, same off center, that would end up centered here. Um, I went ahead and figured out how to modify this to work in my space. Um, if you need to do that, uh, check out the rest of this video and you can see what I did. Uh, to attach this to the ceiling, you're gonna have two mounting points. One of them will attach to your junction box. The other one you just attach to the ceiling. And then there are a number of rods that go in between the attachment point up here and the chandelier. It's supposed to be adjustable with these rods to have anywhere from a 12 inch rod in between to um, all the way up to 48 inches. This one is two feet long. These two are one inch long. The problem is, while they list that as the ability on the website, what they send you isn't actually adjustable in that way. The thread here and here is a different size than what's on the shortest rods. So these will go right in and you can't thread them in because this is too small. This is actually sized to go inside the back of this rod. And these holes inside here are threaded to go either with this smaller diameter thread or into the ceiling mount box. So for my application, what I need is about 12 inches off the ceiling. Now I can't use these, and these are too long, which are the only piece that'll mount between here and here. 
So what I'm actually going to do is cut these down to the length I need and tap them with a tap like this so that I can attach them to the ceiling mount pieces. It took me a while to figure out what thread sizes these are. Um, the bottom is I think a 5 8 thread. Um, inside of these is an 11 64 20 fine thread. So it's 20 threads per inch, 11 64 nominal diameter. The way I checked that is I started off by using a thread gauge like this, and I'll put a link in the description of the video to these. They help you find your thread diameters by fitting over. They can also do inside threads by fitting over like this. Uh, this one does inch and metric. Um, on the back though, there's a um, thread gauge that helps you match up the threads and figure out how many threads per inch it is. Now to double check, I take my 1164 tap in one of these rods and the tap will spin right in freely. So I know I've got a match there between the tap and the threads that I need inside the rod when I modified it. When you're tapping threads, um, you usually need to drill ahead of time to make sure you have the right clearance for the tap to go in and not get stuck and break. I use a set of calipers uh, to measure the inside um, of the, the thread and found this is actually a little oversized in diameter compared to what uh, a drill size would be for the size of thread. So what that means is we'll have a little bit less material on the threads. Uh, that'll be consistent with how they make it, so I'm not worried about it structurally. It'll actually make it a little easier to tap, but we don't need to drill this out ahead of time. Wanted to make sure of that. So what I'm gonna do is make um, one, or sorry, two of these pieces, take the two long rods, cut them down to the length I want, and tap inside. It's really disappointing that this is how they made it. Uh, if you look at the instructions, the instructions show three different types of rods. Uh, and what they send you are two different types of rods. Two of them are the same. So the instructions and the design of this are correct to be able to adjust the way they list it on their website. But the actual manufacturer of it is wrong. All they need to do is what they show in the instruction manual. And instead of putting this collar on one of the short rods, that collar needs to be on this long rod. And then they need a short rod without the collar, uh, threads cut on the end and tapped on this end. If they would have made it that way, it'd be fine. I did try to make sure that these don't unthread. These do not come off. They are not removable. Um, that would have been an easy solution. Unfortunately, there isn't an easy solution. I did spend four hours on the phone with Pottery Barn over multiple calls trying to get them to fix this. Uh, they, I asked them to send me the right part from the instruction manual. They said they couldn't do it. The manufacturer wouldn't send it. Been really disappointed um, in the quality of this, but our ceiling set up to, to take this light fixture. Um, any other light fixture, I'm gonna have to rip out electrical box, redo the drywall. So I'm gonna take a chance and try and modify this and I'll show you how I do it. Both of the long tubes and I've marked them at the length I want to cut, I'm going to do nine inches, get it a little close to the ceiling. Um, I put them in my vise. I've taken a level and made sure that they're in here straight up and down just to make sure as I'm tapping and cutting and keeping everything in alignment. I've also used some plastic wedges in here basically to create some soft jaws. This way um, I don't mark or scratch this. You can use cardboard, um, wood, rags, anything like that to do this process. And I've laid it out so that the height of this uh, mark I have here is the height I want to cut off. And I'm just going to use a straight edge to go around and mark this off going around. So when I cut this, I've got a line going around to make sure that I cut it off square. All right. So next step is to cut this off. I could use a sawzall, uh, but those tend not to be real accurate. Um, if you had a lathe, you could cut it off on the lathe, that'd be great. What I'm gonna use is just a hand hacksaw to cut through this. I'm gonna use the top of my vise as a guide to cut this.
Now I'm going to take a flat file and some rounded files and just clean up any of the jagged metal. You can see I've shoved a rag into the bottom of the pipe here. That's to catch any of this tap fluid I'm going to use. This tap fluid will help lubricate the tap while it's cutting, um, help keep it from binding and breaking. I'll keep applying this tapping fluid while I go. It says an oil-like consistency. Let me go ahead and put some on here as well. And it's coated down inside now, this. I'm going to start feeding the tap in by hand, making sure I keep it straight vertically. And lined up so my threads are straight. And I don't have a tap handle big enough to fit this, so I'm going to use an adjustable wrench. I'm going to loosen up this and then tighten this down pretty good in the vise so it doesn't spin. Um, I'm not tightening right here where the tap is because I don't want to um, compress this pipe too much and make it out of round. The tap is starting to catch. If it starts getting too hard to twist, back off a little bit to clear the chips and then go forward more. So you can see I've got the tap work most of the way down in. Uh, it's getting a little tough to turn, um, but I think I've got enough threads. You can see here from the caps, you know, I only need maybe about half an inch and I've got much more of that of the tap in there. So let me go ahead and back the tap out and do a test fit. Let's see if it works. There you have it. It'll work. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this off and touch up the tops of the this with a black marker just to clean it up. I'm going to repeat the process with the second long pipe to make my new shorter one. So I went ahead and took the two brackets out of here. Um, you'll notice they're the same, except for one has a grounding screw. That's the one that's gonna go where the power is so you can ground everything. Now that I have those off, I'm gonna feed them back through the cord. This cord's too long and it doesn't wanna feed through anyway, so I'm just gonna cut it off. This will make it easier to feed. Just using a wire, it's getting hung up in here. Just using a wire to redirect it so it'll come through.
once you have these on the wire thread down through you can screw it on to the horizontal bar the other one there's no wire to th thread through this one's just kind of a dummy I'm gonna install this bracket next. First, I need to remove these screws that are in here. Since this is the powered location, I'm gonna make sure I use the bracket with the grounding screw. I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted. I'm using the same screws I took out of the junction box. And take the ground and tighten it down to the bracket. Well, I've disconnected the breaker already. I'm still going to check and make sure there's no voltage here using my multi multimeter. So I'm reading zero volts there. Just a, always good idea to double check. You can see there's a lot of excess wire here. I'm gonna just cut it off because anything excess is gonna to have to fit inside of here. I'm using my uh, wiring tool. Next, I'm gonna strip it. So now I've got my three strands here. Actually, I'm gonna strip a little more. All right, next I'm gonna strip these three wires. All right, I also need to make sure that I've got this bracket aligned so I can screw it in when I mount it. I'm tucking all the wires up in. I'm gonna do a little test fit and mark off the location for the other bracket. I'm gonna use this laser measuring device to measure the distance to the wall. All right, I've got five feet eight over. So I wanna do the same distance over here. So I've marked out the distance. I'm just gonna put a pencil line here and there. So I know where to put up my bracket. All right, I've got my marks here and here. This is the bracket that goes up here. I'm gonna center it in here. Now, before I put in the drywall, I put a two by eight between the joists running this way. So that way I could just put screws in. If you don't know what's there, you're gonna to need to try and find a stud. I suppose you could use drywall anchors, but having some wood behind here is definitely the best option. You're gonna put the screws in the middle of the slot so I can adjust this a little bit if I need to, to fine tune the location. All right, I'm gonna check the fit. Perfect. All 
Next, I'm gonna remove these screws and make my electrical connections. All right, I'm gonna use the provided wire nuts to connect all the electrical. White goes to white, black goes to black, and green goes to the bare copper wire. Now tuck all the wires back in and reattach the housing. Next, I'm going to install the bulbs and the globes and test it out. I've reconnected the power at the breaker and I'm going to test it and see how it works. Seems to be functioning and test the dimming and the dimming works as well. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and tell me about it in the comments. You can also subscribe to my channel for more helpful tips. Thanks.